What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin Hole here from Austin Hole Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music. And today I'm back to bring another tutorial. This one I'm actually really excited about because it's something different that we've done. We've done a lot of actual production videos and we've done a lot of like kind of business tips lately, but we don't ever really dive into the songwriting aspect of things. So if you've been on our website, you do know that we offer a lyrics and melody full course where you can actually watch me write a song from absolutely nothing all the way to the end where I hum it along, write the lyrics with you and kind of just walk you through step by step. But that's like a two, two and a half hour course and I wanted to make a video that's a little bit more compact and that's free for all of you who may not be able to pick that up just to kind of see how I write actual lyrics to a song. So we're not gonna cover melody too, too much because for me, melody is a lot of just trial and error of just kind of humming along to the song and then the hard part of that is fitting the lyrics to that melody. So today I really wanna focus on a couple things with lyrics. I wanna focus on A, how I even came up with the idea for the song at all, just because there are a million things to write about and writer's block always strikes, so I want to kind of dive into what I wrote and why I wrote it for this. Then I want to kind of talk about just a little bit how I hummed the melody and kind of came up with what I wanted to do and kind of talk about how I started counting syllables, seeing if any kind of phrases came to mind other than, you know, just the theme of the actual song. And then we'll actually dive into how I wrote the lyrics and then we'll break it down line by line by what's the rhyme scheme, what are we doing syllabically throughout the song, how is the flow, are we using any kind of, uh, you know, literary analysis, like are we doing any metaphors, are we doing any repetition, anything like that. So I really want to dive into this head first and show you guys everything and kind of really rip the lyrics of the song open so you can see exactly what I wrote, why I wrote it, what it's doing to the listener, what it's doing for the song, how it's setting the tempo and the pace, and kind of dive into everything that you can put in lyrics instead of basically just having a poem that you put a melody on. So you want all of these things to kind of make a cohesive and strong lyric, and what we call the lyrics and the melody is top line. So if you hear me referring to it as a top line in this video, I'm just talking about the lyrics and the melody of the song that were laid on the instrumentation or the beat or the composition or whatever you want to call the actual musical aspect of it. But without further ado, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and actually hop into the session. Okay, now we're actually in the DAW. What I want to do first is I want to just go ahead and play the song for you so you can hear the actual lyrics and the melody and everything. Then I'll walk you through kind of how we got the idea for the song, how we got the melody on it, and then most importantly, how we fit the lyrics to that melody that we were just kind of nonchalantly humming. So let's go ahead and just take one quick listen. Maybe you could be the one for me. Maybe you could be my wife. Maybe I could give you everything. Maybe in another life. Maybe we could rewrite history. Maybe just for a night. I just want a chance to hold you close. Make all the wrong things right. But I have to tell you, I've been catching myself falling deeper in your ocean calling. Trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown Save me, I've been catching myself praying I can't stand the thought of waiting I've been going crazy picturing how he holds you Ooh, how he holds you If I told you not a second goes without So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's kind of walk through how I even came up with the concept of the song. So this song actually started with a simple concept first, and then I kind of got just a quick little one-liner from an idea, and then I actually built the instrumental, and then put the melody, and then put the lyrics. So we're kind of going to go in that order. So let's talk about what sparked the song. I was watching How I Met Your Mother one night. If those of you that don't know, it is a TV show. It's incredible. Two characters in the show that are kind of having a will they or won't they. There is Robin Scherbatsky and Barney Stinson. And Robin also has a kind of a will they or won't they with another character, Ted, throughout the show. But in this particular season or two, her and Barney are kind of going back and forth. So Barney is typically this like womanizing lady killer pathological liar will do anything to get in the pants of literally every girl and so it's kind of weird to see him start catching actual feelings for another character of the show right and robin who normally loves attention and affection and loves having men chase her starts kind of having a breakdown saying that she doesn't think that she's worth 
any trouble. She thinks that she's just trouble for Barney. Uh, she doesn't think that it's the right move for Barney to give up his, you know, kind of womanizing lifestyle and settle down with her. And um, there's just this one little scene that has like this one quote that when we were watching it kind of spoke out to me. And I'll just, I'll play it real quick. It's just like an 11 second clip. Maybe I don't want to be saved to trouble. Maybe I want the trouble. I haven't wanted the trouble in a long time, but with you, the trouble doesn't seem so troubling. So in that scene, you hear Barney kind of say, with you, the trouble's not so bad, you know, the trouble's not so troubling. So I literally took out my phone as I was watching that TV show and wrote that little one-liner in my phone and said, with you, the trouble isn't troubling. So then the next day when I got to my desk, I wanted to kind of write an instrumental around that. So I wrote that kind of piano ballad with the orchestra. It's really, really somber. It's really sad. It's kind of slow. It's kind of got like James R3 kind of vibes. And I was really, really feeling that for the mood of the song because I wanted the whole song to be kind of somber. And I knew I wanted it to float around that one-liner. So then, it was just as simple as kind of putting a melody to it. So let me go ahead and mute the vocals here. So what I do when I'm writing the melody, it's pretty simple. It's really just trial and error is I'll just kind of loop the instrumental. And then I'll just hum nonsense over that. So I uh, probably tried a couple things and then eventually I got that. And so I finally got that after a little while. And what I like to do is just really like mumble the actual melody. And sometimes you'll get phrases or end rhymes or just kind of like syllabic content that you're gonna wanna include. So for this, I knew that I loved the actual melody and structure. So I wanted to count out all of the syllables and you can see them here on the actual lyrics. So that is nine. And then the next line was so seven, so it was nine, seven. And so when I was writing lyrics to that, I, I wanted to fit that. I didn't want to have to stray too far away from that melody. So I just eventually started coming up with, maybe you could be the one for me. Maybe you could be my wife. Maybe I could give you everything, maybe in another life. Maybe we could rewrite history, maybe just for a night. And then I actually changed the melody. I just want a chance to hold you close and make all the wrong things right. Let's just, let's just talk about line by line kind of what we're talking about, right? So in the first one, Maybe you could be the one for me. This is basically just professing your kind of love and affection for that one person. Um, you know, maybe you could be the one for me. And then this was really what was uncharacteristic about Barney's quote is maybe you could be my wife. If you're a lady killer and you're kind of a womanizer, it's, it's I mean, the one night stands, they're all typical, right? Even telling a girl you love her just to do whatever you wanna do is typical. But just including this line kind of really, really drove it home how serious it was. Maybe you could be the one for me. Maybe you could be my wife. Maybe I could give you everything. In the show, Barney would basically do anything for anybody. And then maybe in another life, this is basically talking about how it's just never gonna work, right? Like the two characters are just kind of too similar in too many ways to ever really work out. And there is mutual friends involved and it's just really never gonna work. So this is basically saying like, maybe I could give you all of these things, but it would have to be in another life, right? It can't be right now, it can't be right here. Maybe we could rewrite history. That's basically saying like, we don't spend the years, you know, just being friends where I tell you all of the girls I'm taking home and Robin on the other hand doesn't do all those years where she's traveling for work and just so involved with work and with another character, Ted. So maybe we could rewrite history, maybe just for a night. This is basically saying like, if we're not gonna last forever, maybe we can at least enjoy it now, even if it's gonna fizzle out. Um, you know, let's at least have a good time while we can. I just want a chance to hold you close and make all the wrong things right. This is basically that last chance to say like, I, I want to have you in my arms. I wanna kind of do everything that I can with you. And I really want to right my wrongs with you and, and give this a fair shot. So let's actually talk about what all of this highlighted stuff is, right? So these purple highlights, all of the maybe, what we're doing here is repetitive hypotheticals. Uh, some will also call it parallel structure. And this really helps to drive the song along when you're doing maybe da 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 da, maybe da 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 da, maybe da 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 da. It's really parallel and people can just follow that super, super hard. And since all of these are kind of hypothetical situations, especially with, you know, in another life, maybe we could rewrite history. This is all kind of showing that no matter what, this love is never gonna work. So all of these hypotheticals starting the song is basically setting the tone for the rest of the song that's like, this is gonna be a ballad for my love for you that 
it's just, it's never gonna happen. And at some point I'll have to accept that, but right now I kind of can't. I wanted to start with all of those hypotheticals and all of that repetition to really kind of drive that home. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual rhyme scheme, right? So we've got me and everything and history that are all kind of rhyming. So those are all highlighted the same. And if you've studied poetry or you've studied creative writing, you'll know that in a rhyme scheme, the words that you're ending with, you have like, this is your A rhyme, and then we change it so this is your B rhyme. Then you're going back to rhyming with the first one, so that's A. Then life is rhyming with wife, so that's B. Then history is rhyming with everything and me, so that's A again. So we have, uh, let's see, A, B, A, B, A, B. Then we swap it, C, and then we go back to A. Or I'm sorry, this is going back to B. That was my bad, that was just a typo. What we're doing here is having that alternative rhyme scheme is really, really keeping that flow going. So we're fitting the syllabic content of the nine syllables, seven syllables, nine syllables, seven syllables, nine syllables, seven syllables, nine syllables, seven syllables. And we're alternating that rhyme because if we're rhyming every line with each other, it's gonna feel a little bit too cohesive and it's not gonna feel genuine, in my opinion. And then right here, I wanted to break this because it's starting to get a little repetitive and stale and we're about to have a swap up coming here and kind of like a B section of this verse. So I wanted to swap this. I just want a chance to hold you close and make all the wrong things right. So let's take a quick listen so you can kind of hear the effect that that's doing. And I'll kind of run through the lyrics as it's playing. Maybe you could be the one for me. So that I just want a chance to hold you close, that kind of breaks that up and the, then when the next section comes in, it doesn't feel so abrupt like, oh shit, we just swapped everything. We swapped the melody, we swapped the rhyme scheme, we swapped the, you know, there's no more parallel structure. So that was just a really, really quick way to kind of break that up just by swapping that one line out instead of doing you know, the A rhyme where it's still the maybes. That's kind of how we wrote the first section of the verse. Every line is kind of giving that hypothetical, maybe I could do this for you, maybe you could do this, maybe we could be this. And then this next section, this is like the B part of the verse. This is basically kind of like your, your actual profession. But I have to tell you, I've been catching myself falling, deeper in your ocean calling, trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown. Save me, I've been catching myself praying. I can't stand the thought of waiting. I've been going crazy picturing how he holds you. Let's just go ahead and break this down, right? So you can see the rhyme scheme here. We kind of break it up quite a bit. Now we've got D, E, E, F, and F has some internal rhymes that we'll talk about. Then we've got G that rhymes with nothing. Then we've got save me. Then we've got myself, which is parallel to this one. Praying rhyming with save me, waiting writing with both of these, and crazy rhyming with all of that. So let's go ahead and break it down line by line, kind of like we did with the first part, right? I wanted this to kind of stand alone right here because this is acting as a transition phrase. So you'll hear it right here. Right, but I have to tell you. So that kind of leads that next part in because we've kept the melody so parallel. The da 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 was so parallel the whole time that as soon as that, but I have to tell you, that shows you that we're getting to a new part of the song. So that allowed instrumentation to come in. The transition was super easy. This is kind of how you write for transitions instead of relying on production for transitions. So swapping the words, the phrases, the melodies, the structure, and kind of leading that in will show people, okay, we've got a whole new section coming because we're going from this that feels so tight to this where it feels quite different. So people know that we're in a new part of the song and we're gonna be saying something a little bit different. So this kind of rhyme scheme and structure we have here is a little different because it's, it's kind of internal. So let's just go line by line and kind of talk about it. I'm gonna play it and kind of highlight as we're going. Make all the wrong things right, but I have to tell you I've been catching myself falling deeper in your ocean calling Trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown Save me, I've been catching myself praying I can't stand the thought of waiting I've been going crazy picturing how he holds you So let's talk about that. What I wanted to do for this is I had the melody in my head. And so it was honestly a little tricky to fit in 
consistent rhyming, right? Because if I had, but I have to tell you, something, something rhymes with tell you, something, something, dun, dun, it would just feel a little forced. So I wanted to do, but I have to tell you, leave that on its own. Now we're going into something that's gonna start having some structure. I've been catching myself falling. We've got this, I've been catching myself, right? And basically what this is doing is this is saying, I have to tell you that I've been catching myself literally slipping up. This is not usual for me. I'm literally catching myself falling. Um, and this is falling in love. This is just falling out of your personality traits. I have to tell you, I've been catching myself falling. And then this is actually, this could easily act on its own line, but this falling is kind of a transition word into this next line. So you could easily say, I've been catching myself falling, end. However, the way I used it is, I've been catching myself falling, and then deeper in your ocean calling. So there's a couple ways to split this up, right? But I have to tell you, this would act as like a comma in a normal sense. I've been catching myself falling deeper in your ocean. That would be kind of one phrase. And then you would have comma calling. So you're saying, I've been catching myself falling deeper in your ocean, calling, trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown. So this is basically calling for help, right? Trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown. So I've, I'm telling you I'm falling and I'm telling you I'm calling for help and I'm telling you that I'm gonna try to stay afloat but I feel like I'm drowning. And how we're rhyming this is falling is rhyming with calling. And then we've got some internal rhymes. Ocean is rhyming with a float in, which is rhyming with hoping. And then we just kind of end it with another phrase. You won't let me drown. So that doesn't rhyme with anything. It doesn't have any parallel structure whatsoever to anything. And then we have this next kind of part. This is kind of a plea. Save me. This is save me from drowning. I've been catching myself praying, which, you know, Barney in the show is not religious at all. So this is kind of just like showing how bad he's begging for help. And basically what I mean by save me is, is kind of like saying, I'm falling for you. Please save me and tell me that you feel the same way, right? Because I don't want to fall in love with somebody who doesn't love me back. I'll feel like I'm drowning. So hoping you won't let me drown. Save me. I've been catching myself. And again, we've got that parallel structure. So you can see we've got parallel structure to this. I've been catching myself. This is kind of driving that B verse pretty easily. And I wanted some parallel structure because everything else in this is kind of wordy. It's kind of sporadic rhymes. We have some internal rhymes and some ending rhymes. So I really wanted something to be kind of parallel between these two phrases. So, but I have to tell you, I've been catching myself falling deeper in your ocean calling, trying to stay afloat and hoping you won't let me drown. Save me. I've been catching myself. And then I'm rhyming, I'm rhyming praying with save me. I can't stand the thought of waiting with praying. I've been going crazy, which rhymes with waiting, praying, and save me, picturing how he holds you. So we have a D rhyme, an E rhyme, an E rhyme, an F rhyme with some internal F rhymes, a G rhyme, and then this A rhyme is actually going back to rhyming with me up here. I've been catching myself. That's just an H, it doesn't have anything. Praying, rhyming with save me. Waiting, rhyming with praying. And then again, I can't stand the thought of, that doesn't rhyme with anything. Picturing how he holds you, so all of these lines that are not rhyming with anything and that are not in a parallel structure, they're specifically breaking these phrases up so it doesn't feel too sing-songy, right? I still wanted it to feel genuine, like a profession of love. So I didn't want everything to be like A rhyme, B rhyme, A rhyme, B rhyme, A rhyme, B rhyme, C rhyme, D rhyme, C rhyme, D rhyme. I didn't want that uh, because syllabically we've got some pretty tight syllable structure going on here. Six syllables, eight syllables, eight syllables, eight syllables, five syllables, uh, then we've got two, six, two, six, two, six, seven. So all of these lines that have a syllable character and a rhyme character that fall out are definitely separating that so it doesn't feel so like, yeah, 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 it doesn't feel like a nursery rhyme. And so that's that's all intentional. Then we've just got this kind of riff right here that acts as like a pre-chorus kind of bridge into the verse. Crazy picturing how he holds you. And that's really just driving in how hard the thought of him picturing her with another guy is. So it's just drawing emphasis. So we, we'll call that emphatical repetition, right? So he's just emphasizing how hard that is. And then let's actually move into the hook, right? If I told you not a second goes by without you on my mind, if I told you not, or if I told you I've been counting every second till you're mine. So we've got these if I told you's that are repeating here. These are repetitive emphasis. 
if I told you this, if I told you this, and then we have a hypothetical question, would you know that I'm not scared of all the trouble that you bring? Because with you, the trouble isn't troubling. So let's go ahead and just take a quick listen and follow along. If I told you not a second goes without you on my mind If I told you that I'm counting every second till you're mine Would you know that I'm not scared of all the troubles that you bring me? Cause with you, the trouble isn't troubling Cool, so there you go. We've hit that the trouble isn't troubling. Um, shout out how I met your mother. So let's go ahead and talk about this hook and what we're doing and why we're doing it, right? So if I told you not a second goes by without you on my mind, if I told you that I've been counting every second till you're mine, would you know that I'm not scared of all the trouble that you bring? So this is talking about how Robin's like, you don't want the trouble, I'm not worth the trouble, blah, blah, blah. And this is basically Barney saying, if I told you all of these things that I think about, if I told you that you're at the center of my day-to-day -day thought process, would you still be saying that you're trouble to me, right? So if I told you, not a second goes by without you on my mind, there we've got our K rhyme, that line is 15 syllables. If I told you, I've been counting every second till you're mine, mine is gonna be a near rhyme with mind, We've got another 15 syllables rhyming a K line. And then these if I told you's are done, again, just repetitive, em repetitive emphasis. Would you know that I'm not scared of all the trouble that you bring? That's breaking it up. We've introduced a new rhyme. And now we have a full question that is on its own. That is literally, there's no other line that you could carry that to. And then this is answering the question. This is also the tagline. This is what I would personally call the hook because with you, the trouble isn't troubling. So this troubling is rhyming with bring, and this is an 11 syllable line because I wanted to kind of hold off on this. I didn't want, would you know that I'm not scared of all the trouble that you bring, but da 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 the trouble isn't troubling. I didn't want that. I wanted to kind of leave that breath so it feels like it's a little unanswered, right? So like you're almost giving Robin a time to respond. So you, you'll see. If I told you not a second goes without you So that is like really, really, really emphasizing that. I have that run on the end. Would you know that I'm not scared of all the troubles that you bring? There is a long pause after that phrase where it goes kind of unanswered for a second. And then we've got the last little tagline. Sorry, maybe. Then we've got the last little tagline back here. So the way that hook wraps up organically is really nice. It feels like the end of the hook because I asked this hypothetical question, which is the question to pretty much the entire first and second kind of verse that we have up here. This is a really good example of how you can ask hypothetical questions, give the audience kind of a second to ponder that by drawing the next line out and then answering that hypothetical question to end that verse or that hook or that pre-chorus or whatever to drive to the next part. So then for the second verse, we would kind of just do the same thing. I would probably structure it very, very similarly. Um, I kind of just wrote this in a couple hours, so I, I didn't even put a second verse to it that day. And I would probably just go back in and maybe do hypotheticals and switch it up. So like, maybe you could be the one for me. Maybe you could be my wife. I would maybe swap that up and do something else that's going to be repetitive and hypothetical just different kind of phrases to maybe draw on this kind of character arc. So maybe now you're realizing that it is never gonna work. Maybe she'll never see that she's not troubling and uh, you're just trying to cope with it. Or maybe on the other hand, she's seeing that there is a chance and you wanna start kind of building off that. There's a bunch of ways you could take this in the second verse and in the second pre-chorus and in the second hook. But for this, I really hope that you've kind of been able to just kind of follow along and see all of the different literary tools that we've kind of used that you you kind of learn in creative writing the hypothetical questions we've got some metaphors in here deeper in your ocean trying to stay afloat and hoping like these are all kind of metaphors for drowning or falling in love or just feeling like the weight of the world is crushing down on you and there's really nothing you can do to help you and and that's kind of what it feels like to be in love with somebody who is not reciprocating that right like there's no hope 
for a love that is only one way. And so I really wanted to kind of draw on that with some of those metaphors. Then you've got your end rhymes, you've got your internal rhymes, then you've got more hypotheticals, you've got questions that are answered, and then it's, it's a pretty tight uh, syllable structure and rhyming structure. So all of this started with literally just humming along the melody. And then you literally just have to fit that in there. So there are probably a billion different lyrics that I could have wrote instead of these, but these are kind of the lyrics that came out. And I like to pay attention when I'm writing them and make sure that everything is there for a purpose. Every line is saying something. Every line is either building on the last line or starting something new. It's all cohesive. It's painting a picture for the listener. It's painting a picture for the artist. And that's really the key to writing the lyrics of a pop track. Well, that's it. I hope this video kind of helped you guys see what all goes into a song, how it's not as random as songs may seem, how every line means something different and every word that rhymes was intentional and even we have internal rhymes happening, we have repetition and even within that repetition, certain different repeating phrases are doing other things than the other ones. And we've got some actual similes and metaphors and stuff like that tied throughout because we want that kind of descriptive language. We want imagery. We want it to actually evoke emotion and thought behind the listener. Like this has to relate to as many people are gonna listen to it and it's gotta relate to you on some kind of level. So whether it is really, really personal and it's happened to you, you can write about that. You can write about TV shows, movies, books you've read, things that your friends are going through. Kind of practice a little bit of empathy and sympathy and try to write about other people's experiences because you'll have so much more to actually pick and choose from rather than just actually writing about your own experiences. So try to pay a little bit of attention in your day-to-day -day life. We do have videos on how to beat writer's block where I kind of talk about that stuff a little bit more in depth. But hopefully this video of actually breaking down the lyrics line by line helped you understand how I write lyrics, what goes into them, what the songs mean, how to break them down and do your own lyrics. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like the video and subscribe to our channel. We're making videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and we're trying to do as much free content as possible. If you guys do want more than this, feel free to go check out our website. We have all kinds of stuff. We have sample packs, courses, MIDI packs. We've got blog posts. We've got all of the videos that we post on YouTube kind of focus there in a hub. And then if you want a community, definitely come join the Make Pop group. That's absolutely free. We're running a competition right now where you can win Cubase. So come here, check it out. Look at the top post, enter the competition. It's a production competition. Other than that, I'll let you guys go. We'll see you next time. Much love, Make Pop Music. Peace out. Floating home